This you already know from the, uh, from the knowledge clip um, that is online. Um, we talked in the previous lecture also about Coase's argument on why firms emerge and his argument on the uh, size of firms. So um, why is there a firm in the first place? Since the market is not free, um, so if you need to um, organize something through the market, you need to search a relevant party to trade with and negotiate with that party, enforce the um, agreement that you made, uh, that costs you um, money um, in the form of time perhaps um, or um, things that you need to uh, to buy and uh, that may actually be so high the marketing cost um, that the transaction cost in the firm would be lower um, and in that instance um, actors prefer to um, set up an organization to uh, to transact that is what i already explained that's old news um, for you you've discussed that before now um, some new news. Um, what is institutional about COS, um, you may wonder. So we discussed institutions as rules, um, and you may um, think that there are not that many rules present in, um, in COS's uh, story, but that's actually not the case. You could say that organizations themselves are sets of rules. They are ways to, uh, to behave. Uh, they limit the, um, the freedom of the people involved in the organization. Um, a market is also a set of rules in itself. How does a price come about? Um, who is allowed to, to sell on that market? Who is allowed to buy? Um, what rights do you have as a buyer or a seller? Um, that is also a set of rules that guides your, uh, your behavior. And in different institutional environments, so different um, countries, for example, um, other choices are made. Um, in some countries, uh, a particular activity is um, predominantly organized through the, uh, through the market, whereas in others, it is uh, predominantly firm-based um, or government-provided or um, organized in a cooperation among, uh, among firms. So the business system, the national set of, uh, of rules, determines what types of activities arise in a market, what um, uh, what organizational forms are present to, um, to organize economic activities. Do we see a flourishing um, um, black market? Do we see a flourishing sharing economy? Are there many family firms in the, in the country? Or are they most like mostly uh, corporations? Um, those kind of um, questions um, are um, determined by the national rules that favor one type of organizing um, over, the, uh, over the other. So that's one type of analysis that you can, uh, that you can do with this, um, with this framework to see how differences in national rules produce differences in um, organizations um, that populate um, industries. Another thing that you can do, um, and I have a couple of graphs on this, is um, to wonder then what happens if um, things change, and a couple of things can, uh, can change, um, which I'll show in a sec. So the first is, um, that we talked about so far, is comparative but static. Um, nothing changes, um, but you have different environments, and in these different environments, you see that other solutions are um, preferred by consumers. What we have here is that the, um, that the rules change and then you will also see change uh, happening. Bear in mind that although in the models I will focus on the market hierarchy comparison, um, there's of course in practice multiple forms of, um, uh, of organizing possible and you could apply the same type of reasoning um, to comparisons of these uh, these forms, so, and this we also talked so um, I talked about before um, the ingredient of the graphs um, that is what then determines the search, negotiation, and enforcement cost. And the answer there was complexity, frequency, and asset specificity of uh, one of five types. Okay, so the ingredients you all know, um, but this I have not shown to you before. Um, 
what we see is a graph of transaction costs as being determined by asset specificity. And you know that um, rather than asset specificity, you could also include um, complexity, uncertainty or frequency on the horizontal axis. Um, and transaction costs, and that is then the total of search, negotiation and enforcement costs on the vertical axis. And the graph shows two things um, so far, I mean, I'll, I'll add more. Um, it shows that even for very simple transactions, so those which have no specific investments at all, the um, transaction costs are above zero. So there's no free lunch um, and there's no um, market transaction that comes at no cost at all. The second thing that you, um, the second conclusion that you can draw already now is that it is an upward sloping curve. Um, so as asset specificity increases, it will be increasingly more costly to transact through the market. Now, we're comparing a market and a hierarchy. So um, the next step is then to add the firm to this uh, model. And that looks, for example, it looks like this. It's again an upward sloping curve um, that starts at a point um, above zero. Um, but there's two further conclusions here. First, the hierarchy curve starts above the, uh, the market curve. So at zero complexity for very um, simple transactions for transactions that require hardly any specific investment, a firm transaction will always be more expensive than a market transaction. Um, so that's the first prediction that comes from the model. Simple things you don't do yourself, but you rather buy them um, in a market. The second thing that you see is that the curves are both upward sloping, but the hierarchy curve um, has a um, slope that is lower than that of the market curve. So as asset specificity increases, both forms of um, coordination get more expensive, but this goes much quicker for uh, the market than for the, uh, for the hierarchy. And together that produces a point where the two curves cross-sect. Um, I said already that for very simple transactions, um, the market will be um, the market curve will be below the hierarchy curve, and then at some point the um, the hierarchy curve becomes lower um, than that of the of the market curve. So mm, transactions beyond a certain point of complexity, beyond uh, a certain um, asset specificity, um, these transactions um, are ideally concluded in a firm. Firms would rather do difficult things themselves than buying these through the market. This took me five minutes to draw. Um, the rational actors, um, we said before, pick the form of organizing that is the cheapest amongst the alternatives. So a rational actor, a rational firm, would choose to do those things themselves, which are cheaper than um, a market um, solution would be. And a rational firm would also choose to procure uh, particular products through the market if that is cheaper than um, doing these um, themselves. And then you get what's called an envelope. So that's the, um, the line that represents the lowest of the two um, curves. And you see that um, when the lines dissect, you jump from the market curve to the hierarchy curve because that's uh, that's cheaper. I've um, added two dashed lines. The one on the left is a hypothetical level of asset specificity for which the uh, the market will be uh, the cheapest alternative, and the uh, one on the right um, will be a hypothetical level of asset specificity for which the hierarchy will be the cheapest alternative. In the first type of analysis where we said that um, comparative, uh, comparative static analysis where we said that um, in some countries things will be different than in others, well, that you would see 
with, for example, hierarchy curves for the Netherlands and a hierarchy curve for Spain, where uh, maybe the transaction cost in Spain will be lower than um, than that in um, in the Netherlands, or the curve, the hierarchy curve is uh, is steeper in Spain than it is in the Netherlands. Things like that, um, and then of course for a given level of asset specificity, you will see different choices being made in Spain as compared to the Netherlands. But I told you that this graph would not focus on um, comparative statics, um, but rather that we would see what the effect is of changes in the, um, in the model. And you can look at two changes. Um, and I took one of the dashed lines out. So let's, let's assume that um, there's a particular economic activity that as a firm you have, usually you've done that yourself. Um, at least that would be the rational um, solution. Um, asset specificity is of a particular level. You need, for example, highly specialized tools. And if you would um, engage in a market transaction, then the market party would have to invest in developing that tool um, and the risk of opportunistic behavior would be real. This is what uh, was the topic of the um, earlier knowledge clip. But over time, what may happen is that tools become more generic. So what was originally a very specialized investment um, becomes easier over time. It's less difficult to, um, to, um, to produce that tool. Um, what you may also see in terms of complexity, for example, uh, which could also be on the horizontal axis, is that a transaction that was originally very complex becomes easier for the firm. The firm maybe learns how to uh, do a, uh, to build a particular um, um, intermediate good that it needs in its production. Now what you see happening is a change in asset specificity here or complexity or frequency as you wish. And um, that change may lead to um, outsourcing. So something that a firm used to do itself is now something that it procures through the market. We've seen that happening with call centers um, in the, uh, in the uh, 1990s um, when uh, phone lines, um, intercontinental phone lines were, were becoming more and more reliable. And firms knew how to um, kind of standardize how to script the questions that, um, that consumers came with. And then rather than having someone on the phone in your own factory, um, you would rather have a call center working perhaps on the other side of the globe with a set of standardized uh, questions and answers um, that most consumers can, uh, can ask. Um, and that activity that you used to do yourself is then now left to um, parties in the market, um, so um, a call an outside call center that works for different, uh, different factories, for, uh, for multiple factories. The second thing that can happen is um, not so much a change in asset specificity, but rather a change in the rules around the, uh, the transaction. Um, so the um, kind of the mapping of asset specificity onto transaction cost. Um, asset specificity is expensive because there's a risk of um, opportunism. Um, it is, and you need to do something to prevent that, uh, that opportunism. Uh, for example, have really extensive contracts. Now, if making extensive contracts becomes easier, then um, there's no change in asset specificity or in complexity. The, um, the, the transaction is still the same. But it's less costly to do this, um, to engage in this kind of activity. For example, courts may become more reliable. Then um, it is cheaper to get your um, to, to get what you're entitled to in a court of law. And what then happens, as I said, is not a change along the axis of um, asset specificity, um, but it's a change in the graph. The graphs start to shift. If uh, courts become more reliable. Um, you could hypothesize that it is cheaper to, um, if you're in a market um, contract, to get um, what you are entitled to in case the other party would um, would default on the uh, on the contractual agreements. 
um, and then the market curve would drop as it does um, here. Um, as a result, the point where the two curves intersect moves here to the right. Um, so the market becomes uh, it becomes cheaper to coordinate to the market, and then um, the intersection point moves to the right. And for transactions between this this RK between these, these this arc, um, it used to be cheaper to coordinate through um, uh, through a hierarchy. Um, but now the market has become cheaper. So for these transactions, you will see a change in governance mode. Um, what that implies in practice, well, for example, um, the, I talked earlier about uh, call centers. Um, call centers became much more popular um, when um, IT, when, when phone lines became stable. So when in, and communication technology developed and became uh, cheaper. Um, then call center activity that was initially done in a hierarchy could suddenly be outsourced because the cost of that activity had uh, changed. So what we see is three types of, uh, of analyses with this model. Um, the first, you can compare institutional environments. Um, so that's a comparative analysis of two institutional environments. The second is a change along the axis. So one of the drivers of the transaction cost, um, complexity, asset specificity, changes. Um, the um, transaction, for example, becomes easier to, uh, to conclude. And the third thing is that actually the institutional environment itself changes, or the rules, um, they change, and that leads to moving transaction cost curves.